Wow, the Chargers um, are gonna are gonna be the Chargers, I guess. They th th here's the reality of the situation: Brandon Saley should be gone, should be gone, and yet because Spanos is too cheap, they have fired Joe Lombardi. Who, hey, he should have been gone. I've been bitching about the uh, the Chargers offense all year, and you look at the the uh the heat maps or whatever you know of where the completions happen they don't scheme up plays down the field and you have a quarterback with a top five at minimum arm in the nfl i mean he can make all the throws uh justin herbert and joe lombardi's offense was horrible however what about the pedigree emma <laughs> what about the pedigree what about the lineage uh, when it comes to the loss that we just saw a 27 point lead one of the worst losses in the history of the NFL, and you have a defensive head coach, plus Brandon Staley's decision to play starters, injuring Mike Williams, giving him a fracture in his back. And then Bosa got a little banged up. I mean, he still played in this game, but it could have been much worse, had a groin issue. I, you're going to hold on to that guy? And the reason is because Spanos is too cheap. And he is too cheap to go after Sean Payton. They should have cleaned house, gone after Sean Payton, and understood if they, you know, decided that they want to spend money to actually win a football game, win a Super Bowl, win football games. They should have gone after Sean Payton. Sean Payton lives in L.A., has said openly that he wants to uh, coach in a warm climate. I'm pretty positive he would, pro would have a positive opinion about Justin Herbert. And instead, the Chargers have decided that they are content to be the Matthew Stafford era Detroit Lions, because that is what the the Chargers will be with Justin Herbert if they continue down this path. And if I were him, I would Kirk Cousins this crap and force my way to free agency. Tag me, tag me again, and then I'm and then I'm gone. That's what I would do if I were him. I would not want to be a part of Detroit Lions AFC West. I mean, and the lines are good now, but that's what his career is going to look like to me. Matthew Stafford getting banged up, having to carry an entire offense. They're not dissimilar players in terms of, you know, their size, stature, arm strength. That's what this, that's, that's what this smells like to me. And then what was so frustrating to watch is that Herbert in this game, with what plays that were being called for him by Joe Lombardi, was still executing this tic-tac bullshit check down offense perfectly almost. Mm -hmm. He was fitting balls basically in the window that was the size of the player's hands. But whether it was four yard behind the line of scrimmage check down screen passes to Austin Eckler or check downs to Donald Parham or um, Gerald Everett. Like he was running that offense essentially flawlessly and yet that goes to show you how stunted they are making him. Yeah. That he was doing everything that they were asking him to do when we just know for a fact he can do so much more. But he did not have the personnel nor the scheme to actually do it. It is, they were like DeAndre Carter wasn't playing, Mike Williams wasn't playing. That shouldn't, like, it, with a team that has that quarterback, that shouldn't be that prohibitive. Like, I mean, yeah. If he actually had any semblance of offensive depth around him and a scheme that actually maximized his strengths, he would not be dinking and dunking his way to um, 27 points in the first half. And also, we can blame the Chargers defense for the second half, but it's really fucking hard to lose a game when you convert over 50% of your third downs, somehow still can't get into the end zone after the second half, miss a field goal also, and yes. you are plus five in the turnover, in turnover differential. Well, how many times, I, I would love to know how many times a quarterback has won a game turning the ball over five times. It's an abomination. It's a disgrace. It is. I mean, and, and, and again, just to highlight, this is supposed to be Brandon Staley's bread and butter. Defensive wizard, game planner. Right? He made he made he made the exact right adjustments for the first half to stifle and mix up Trevor Lawrence. 
Doug Peterson went into the locker room. They came back. They adjusted their game plan by like four inches each way. Yeah. And they diced them up yep. for, for 31 straight, 32 straight points. That's the thing. I mean, like even th that, that first year of Brandon Staley where he was going for it on fourth downs all the time and he was getting a lot of praise from the analytics community. I, I like aggressive play calls, but they never seem to really make sense within the context of the game. Like when Brian Dayball was calling those fourth fourth and one, you know, QB sneaks with Daniel Jones in the last game. You're like, okay, but this makes sense because the the they can't stop anybody, and this uh, or, or the the um, the Vikings, they're unable to stop the Giants, and also the Giants defense is having a hard time. So within the context of that game, that makes sense. It did, it, did, it never made full sense for Brandon Staley, especially given his defensive like pedigree. It just sounded like he was listening to some analytics guy in his ear. And then this year, he's not really doing it that much, right? If I'm not mistaken, uh, I would have to go back to the numbers on that. But if you I, just look at the whole team, how could how could you how in the sense of how Lombardi runs the offense and how the defense was not able to continue to make adjustments and counter the counters that Doug Peterson came out with. What else can you think but that this guy is actually risk averse? And that's what's so shocking. I don't know what his identity of as a coach is. It, it just it, every, it it seems like he doesn't necessarily know what he's doing from the outside, and he's being carried by a player who has elite talents and executes their dog shit offense to the best of his abilities. And the defense, frankly, doesn't play that well. And they they started off right. They clearly had a good game plan, and they were able to turn Trevor Lawrence over a few times. But like you say, at halftime, w were there any adjustments at all? Was and there any accounting for the fact that they were going to come back swinging and try to win this game? Doesn't seem like it. And the person who was making the adjustments and the actual ballsy coach on the field was the guy on the other sideline. Mm -hmm. 